this video, we will look at an exam style question of chapter 3, graphs and functions and coordinate geometry. Now, this is actually also a, a function graph, but we are also making use of the nature of the roots. Let's look at this one. Functions f and g are defined, this is f, x is element of real numbers, g is this, and x is not 2, because otherwise it will be division by 0. So find the values of k for which the equation has two equal roots. Okay, so I'm, I'm first going to say, I'm first going to substitute the one into the other one and put it equal to x. So substitute, and don't forget, it's going to be gx. So where am I now? gx, and I substitute it in f. So Basically, I'm going to take G and I'm going to oh, I'm going to take this one and I just substitute it in there. Okay. So basically, and I put it equal to X. And then I, I'm first going to just form my quadratic equation. So I put it like this and then I get my X squared uh, terms, my X terms and my terms without. And now, here comes nature of the roots. So when the equation has equal roots, so find the which that has two equal roots, then the discriminant is equal to zero. So substitute, don't forget, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So I substitute it in, I get my quadratic equation, I factorize, I get my value of k is negative 7, I get my value of k is 5. And determine the roots of the equation, Okay, for which the value of, uh, of k found in part A. So basically, I substitute the negative 7 in, okay, in this one. Okay, so if I substitute it in there, then or in there, it doesn't matter where. And then I factorize and I get the two roots will be 8. And then I substitute 5 and I get my two roots will be negative 4. That's how you do it. Okay, combination. I want you to stop the video and I want you to do try now 23. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Right. The function f is defined, okay, and it's always good to write it down then, f, and I, this is mapping notation, but I prefer to write it just in normal notation. I call it normal, but it's just simple, make it more simple. Okay, so express fx, oh, and it's again that completing the square. So don't forget, I take 2, it's completing the square of an expression. So it's going to be x squared minus 6x, leave a space 7 over 2, close the bracket. Okay, now if I'm doing completing the square, I'm just going to say plus, I take the middle term and I divide it by 2, so it's going to be 3 squared. You can put negative 3 squared, but it will be the same. And whatever I add, I must also subtract. And now don't forget that you created a perfect square there. So, and then put usually your bracket and then another bracket. So it's x, it's, it's that sign, and it's 3. And it's square. Uh, I've got to put the plus there. Okay, so it's just going to be in 7 over 2, so it's going to be 3 and a half uh, minus 9, and that's going to be negative 11 over 2. And now I multiply it until in front, in front. So I'm getting 2, okay, and then it's going to be negative 11. There it is. I get all my marks. Now, number B, that was number A, number B, state the range of F. Now, remember, from this, you can find the turning point. What is the turning point? Different sign? Okay. How, how does the sketch look? So you must think all these things, not very difficult. We did it also. Okay, so this is positive, so it's going up. I'm actually just focusing on that one. 
it's free. So if I'm looking, I just, oh, sorry, must be a curve. Oh. <laughs> it's not nice. Okay, let's at least look a little bit better. Okay, so that is the turning point. That's free and negative 11. So if you think this value here will be negative 11. Okay, so the curve, where does the y values exist? Up. From negative 11, up. So what will be the range? The range of fx, uh, it's, uh, x is an element of real numbers, usually, uh, if you want, uh, not x, y. Now let's make it like this. So y is bigger or equal to negative 11. And if you want to say, you can say y is an element of real numbers. Okay, but they're actually focusing on that part. Then, find the set of values of x for which the function fx is smaller than 20. So they want now to just to substitute it in there. So it's again almost like chapter 1. So they just go and say fx is smaller than 21. So basically, that 2x squared minus 12x plus 7 is smaller than 21. So just bring it now. I just want to move this. So basically, you're just going to bring it over. It's quadratic, so bring that one over. And if you bring it over, it's going to become negative 21 plus 7, and that's negative 14. Okay. And if you want to solve this, and this is now again a quadratic inequality, do it on the side. I just want to see what color will work. Doesn't matter. Um, so you're going to say 2x squared minus 12x minus 14 equals 0. Make it get rid of the 2s, divide by 2. So x squared minus 6x minus 7 equals 0. And if I factorize this, it's going to be 7 and 1 and 1 and 1. 7 minus 1 is 6. Biggest negative positive x, x. So x minus 7 x plus 1 equals 0. So, oh, let's just go on here. So, x is equal to 7 or x is equal to negative 1. So, on a sketch, hmm, let's just move it a little bit here. On a sketch, if I, okay, and now look, it's positive. So, if I'm looking at that, we can make it red, we can make it yellow. Oh, it's just not a straight line, just a curve. Okay. Uh, so it's negative 1 and 7. So on a curve, say it's looking like this. And then, basically, you're just going to say, okay, what is it? It's smaller. This is very important to check that. If it's smaller, it means, I want to take this, but I want to take red under the x-axis. So therefore, just from that sketch, so therefore, make it white, x, and, and if there's not the equal, don't put the equal sign here, otherwise you're incorrect. So negative 1, because it's that space in between. On a number line, it would have been looking like this. The circles will not be colored in because there's not equal. Negative 1, 7. So x is bigger than negative 1 and smaller than 7. And that's how you do that. Okay, let's look at number d. The function g, it's coming in, is this. Find the value of the constant k for which the equation this has two equal roots. Okay, so they actually already substitute this two into each other, put it equal to zero, and then we come to the equal roots. So let's first write down the functions. Okay. My function f, it's 2x squared minus 12x plus 7. And my function g, I just don't write it in mapping, then it's easier. Then the 
gave me already. It's actually already, sometimes they don't do it, then I must um, make it one by substituting the one into the other one. But now they were nice, they did that. So they said g f x equals zero. So take this one and substitute because f goes into g in there. So what will I find? I will find 2 and 2x squared minus 12x plus 7 uh, plus k. And if I simplify that, I get 4x squared minus 24x plus 14 plus k and that will be equal to 0. Okay, now, if it's two equal roots from chapter one, then for equal roots, the discriminant must be equal to zero. So remember, this is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, so B squared minus 4AC must be equal to zero. For repeated roots, equal roots. So in the place of B, I say negative 24 squared. In the place of A, I put 4. And in the place of C, I put 14 plus K. And I put it equal to 0. Okay, then I press 24 squared, negative 20. Then it's 5, 7, 6. Then I take 4 times 4, times 14, and that's 2, 2, um, it's 2, 2, 4, and this, if I take 4 times 4, be careful, otherwise make it 1, so that you have 16, and it's actually negative 16 times 14, or negative 16 times k, and that's negative 16k, and that will be equal to 0, and then if I say 5, 7, 6, minus 2, 2, 4, and that's 3, 5, 2, take the 16 over, and then take this, divide both sides by 16, and then, so therefore, let's just move just a little bit off, therefore, the value of k is equal to 22, and that's how you do.